I can never get it when I'm on the ground You can never get it when you pull me down Even when I fall, let's be open now Something about the space that I own it now Something about the race of the richest town Something about this place falling down I don't wanna glow up just to watch you drown This ain't Holly Choco, we in fighting now Hey, it's Zana. So this is gonna be a tarot reading for the Libra full moon, which is happening on the 19th of April. I really hope these messages help you and provide some clarity of anything that you're going through. And make sure that you, when you pick the card, like you really feel into it, like feel which one you're drawn to and not just let your mind decide for you and race and go crazy, you know? <laughs> like it's about feeling it, so. Yeah, I hope this helps and let's jump straight into it. I'm going to list the timestamps in the comments below. So, Hey, it's Anna. So I'm going to speed up the shuffling, otherwise it will just be really tedious. But let's get into the first reading. I usually do the Celtic cross or like my own interpretation of the Celtic cross because I feel like that really helps me actually get some answers rather than it just being a storyboard kind of thing. So this is going to be... The Celtic Cross, but I'll explain it as I go along. I like to leave those to the side if lots of cards come out because I feel like it all tells a part of the story, you know. Okay. Cards be flying everywhere today. So I just like to look at everything just to get kind of an idea. So I just want to start off by noticing that the Libra card has actually come out in this reading. Like that's pretty cool. <laughs> so for the Libra full moon and you have the Libra card as the outcome in fact. But let's start in the centre. So. This is your current energy, the overall energy for the reading. It's the first card that I pulled and you have the three of pentacles, which for me really is about connection. Like it's about teamwork. It's about connecting with others, but also expressing who you actually are. Like really letting yourself be who you are in front of other people, sharing that with the world showing them exactly who you are and not being afraid to ask for help when you need it, not being afraid to like reach out to other people too who may need it and really just working together and growing together. And of course this is a Libra full moon and Libra is all about relationships and all about the balance and harmony and peace. So I just think that's really beautiful beautiful energy to start with of connection which is exactly what this moon is about so the overall energy really is about connecting and then in the past you have the high priestess and I love this card probably because you know Pisces and all of that <laughs> I'm a Pisces sun and Pisces mercury so the high priestess I love because it's all about intuition it's all about your higher self and really tapping into who you are tapping into your knowing tapping into God basically God consciousness God frequency which is exactly what you are so for this card to come out in the past tells me that you've been trying to hear your intuition that you've spent some time getting to know yourself you've spent some time feeling who you are and trying to understand who you are and trying to manoeuvre through that space of like making decisions from this space, you know, from your higher self, from who you actually are, from tapping into your soul and your heart and your spirit, being able to move forward, you know. So that with the current energy of like you've been trying to connect with other people from this space of your authentic self, your heart and your inner knowing and sharing that with the world. And that can be quite scary, but it's definitely a powerful thing. And then 
your card for the future is the Knight of Pentacles. So this is where you're going, this is where you've come from, this is where you're at, and this is where you're heading towards. And the Knight of Pentacles, plus it being about a pentacle, and the pentacles is, can all, always be about, let's just start that phrase again, because I can't seem to get my words out today. I am a Pisces Mercury, okay? But this is like the worst placement to have, so bear with me, I do stumble on my words all the time, but, um, a card of pentacles can always signify money and abundance and material gain and material wealth but the knight of pentacles he is moving steadily along like he's grounded it's an earth sign and earth all about being grounded and all about knowing where you're going knowing the direction that you're headed towards you know so to be coming from the spiritual perspective and your higher self and your intuition and connecting with people and moving along your journey in a real steady, grounded, firm way of like really standing in who you are, standing in your path and your purpose and knowing exactly where you're going and knowing exactly who you want to take with you and what kind of relationships you want to have. So it's a very good card to get. And beneath that, this for me I put down here is the like human perspective or like the underlying issue or something that's below like it's below your energy so for me I feel like this is the human perspective and this is the spiritual perspective so you've got the knight of cups and the five of pentacles and for me this always screams lack mentality like it always screams like doubt and fear and I mean, if you look at how they're dressed, they're like in poverty. So it's like, and the fact that you've got it with the knight of, uh, the, the knight, oh God, the king of cups, who is all about balancing your emotions. I feel like this is really about the mental shift and the emotional shift into your full self. I mean, if you see the emperor is up here, like that is Aries energy. And I am an Aries rising and Aries Venus. And like, the emperor sits on his damn throne like he knows what the fuck he is about he knows what he's doing he knows what he wants he knows who he is there's no doubt or fear in his mind there's no lack mentality in his mind like look at him just chilling on his damn throne like <laughs> he is loving life right now you know i don't even know if this is in camera but he is just loving his life you know so for me i feel like this is really about the journey of of course that is where my camera would decide to cut off but I feel like this is really about the journey of shifting your mind and balancing your emotions like really elevating the mind it's a journey of getting in tune with who you are getting in tune with the kind of relationships that you want getting in tune with your mind and your emotional state and like really hearing your thoughts and hearing everything that it comes up and tells you everything that's false everything that's true being able to decipher the kind of relationships that you want, how to express yourself, how to connect with people, how to share that, how to communicate that, and really being able to move on your journey in full knowing and full power of everything that you want and your worth and deservance of those things, being able to really like stand firmly in that and know exactly that that is exactly who you are and that you are so worthy of everything that you want like it's all yours you know he knows exactly what he wants he knows exactly who he is and it's all his and this is really like highlighting the process of having to shift out of this through your thoughts and through your emotions to really balance it out so that you can get into this type of energy you know and this is the spiritual perspective of like, that's what this card up here represents. And the fact that you've got the emperor, like he's just so, such a powerful force. And this is the card of Aries. And then across here we have this, and this completely confirms what I'm saying. Like this is why I'm saying the kind of message that I am, because this is like the bridge of going from here and getting to here. You know, it's the conflict, it's the thing that's like in the way or the thing that you need to deal with. And you have the Eight of Swords, which, I mean, this person is blindfolded, but they could easily take the blindfold off. You know, they have all the swords right behind them. They could easily take the blindfolds off, but they can't see because they're not aware. 
he's not aware. I don't know if that's a he or a she. <laughs> it looks like a he, but they're not aware of the fact that they literally are stopping themselves. You know, they're stuck in fear. They're standing there as if they're blindfolded when they could easily just remove it. So it's definitely saying that you're your own worst enemy. You hold yourself back and you can easily take that off by doing this work of really hearing your thoughts and tapping into your emotions and being able to move them to where you want them to go because you are in control this is your life this is your reality and when you look at it from the spiritual perspective when you look at it from the higher perspective of your true self you realize that actually you can create whatever the hell you want and that you're the one allowing the blindfold to remain around you when it doesn't need to only you can save yourself is what I'm hearing, you know? We put ourselves into this reality for a reason and only you can save yourself. Also, these cards, I'm pretty sure they came out with the Knight of Pentacles, which would indicate where you're going. I'm pretty sure it was the Knight of Pentacles. I have to watch this back, but doubt, okay? Complete doubt, complete worry, complete wonder and yet you can go wherever you want literally and also this is the three of wands and you also have the three of pentacles under here so it's like being able to choose where you want to go I'm still hearing you're only able to save yourself like literally you can save yourself and then the rest of the cards like really tapping into your heart, tapping into who you are, tapping into your childlike nature, you know, tapping into the pure innocence and divinity of who you are and being able to share that with people. Like this is a real lesson. It's teaching you something. And the fact that you have the emperor and the empress both out, balancing the masculine and feminine completely. Like this is a real, real internal shift out of the fear, out of the doubt, out of the worry, out of the confusion and into your power, like into who you are, into your heart even. It's a real lesson and it's teaching you something but it's always getting you to exactly where you need to be and exactly where you're supposed to go. It could never go wrong. Now over here we have the advice and I love how this came out. <laughs> So you have the eight of wands, the seven, this is, my camera likes to cut off every now and then, but um, so this is the advice and you have the eight of wands, the chariot, and then the tower in reverse. And instantly I'm feeling like this is telling you you're in control. Like it's telling you that you can go wherever you want to and it happens very fast and that the tower moment, the fear, the worry, the whatever moment it is for you where you feel in despair like you literally feel like you're falling out of a building it's so necessary and it really has to happen and it's not always as bad as what you think it's not always as bad as what your mind tells you that it is sometimes it looks way scarier than it is and you realize oh wait I can take the blindfold off I can leave this situation I can get out of this thing you know I'm in control I, I rule my life like through my mind I can move it to wherever I want it to go and it can happen as fast as it needs to as fast as it's supposed to happen it will but sometimes we have to go through these moments sometimes sometimes they're blessings in disguise sometimes they have to happen even when we can't quite understand why, even when we don't really know what's going on, even when we can't see exactly where we're headed or how we're going to get out of it, it needs to happen. And it will unfold exactly as it's supposed to. And it always works out for your highest good. But you have to stand in that knowing. You have to stand firmly in who you are in order for it to do so. Because when you don't stand firmly in who you are, you stand here, completely blindfolded, completely unsure of yourself, completely unsure of life, unsure of where you're going. And then you stay here, in lack. 
and I know that it's not easy to do but I feel like this reading is a reminder of your divinity like it's a reminder of who you really are it's a reminder that you're literally the masculine and the feminine energies within a vessel and that you can manifest anything that you want through your mind but you have to tap into it you have to fill your heart through the fear through the uncertainty we all get scared like through all of it when you stand firmly in who you are things will unfold way beyond what you could imagine like things will really start to move and what you can do next this card is the aquarius card but you have the star in reverse and you also have the ten of wands in reverse I really feel like this is telling you to let go. Let go of like holding on, let go of questioning, let go of the need to know everything, let go of wondering how it's gonna happen, you know? Let go of the doubt, let go of everything. Let go of the way it should look, you know? Like, Things are going to happen exactly as you need them to. But it's time that you see who you actually are, you know. It's time that you see yourself for the divinity and the beauty that you are. And with the outcome. Like, everything that you want is yours. It's already yours. You know, you're planting those seeds. You can easily plant those seeds. And I really feel like the fact that this come, came out on its own and these cards came out together is really saying, like, this moment, I know you feel like shit. Like, I know that there was a point where you hit rock bottom. I know there was a point where you didn't know how you were going to get out. You didn't know how you were going to move forward. You didn't know if you were even going to be able to. Like, you literally felt like you had ten swords in your back. You felt like you died. Like... It's that kind of energy. You felt like giving up. But this is really saying that like, it was all a part of the plan. It was all necessary. It was all leading you to where you needed to go. Like justice. It's justice. It's almost like karmic cycles. It was all necessary because it's led you to actually putting those seeds where you wanted them, like planting those wands, you know, really going after exactly what you need, really being able to express it and tell people who you are and show them what you want and show them what you're about and let yourself shine, completely shine. Let yourself shine exactly as who you are, you know? So I think, I hope this reading was helpful, but I really think it's just... To kind of summarise, I feel like it's really saying to literally feel yourself, like feel who you are, trust yourself even, trust your intuition and make decisions from then. Only then can you move forward in the exact direction that you want to go, you know, only then can you strive towards your abundance when you're firmly planted in who you are and you release the doubt and the worry and the debating. And if this is related to a relationship, like it's releasing the fear and the worry around whatever circumstance it is that you're going through because everything comes back to the self. So it's about being yourself, it's about being who you are and connecting in a way that's from that space and from that knowing because then you manifest your life that you want. It all starts with you and it starts with your mind. It starts with the mental battle and the emotions and then it manifests in the physical. I really hope this helped. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, reading number two. So I'm gonna fast forward the shuffling otherwise it's like real tedious to watch. <laughs> this is so funny this came out in the spiritual perspective for reading number one and it's just done it again i love it when so many cards come out 
gosh. So, I really be wanting to tell you things today. Let me just move these further into the picture. It's kind of hard to do this with the camera. But these cards are screaming at you. <laughs> Okay, let's just pull an Alka. So this is like the Celtic cross. I like to kind of do my own variation of it because I feel like when you ask questions and you channel a certain type of energy, then you get better, like it's easier to interpret exactly what they're saying. So this middle card is your current energy or the overall energy of the reading and you've got the knight of cups which for me is all about the cups are the emotions it's a water sign but also like notice how he's moving but like he's like heading in a direction that he wants to go but he's not like it's not a rush it's kind of like stable, like he's balancing a cup in his hand, you know, that could wobble everywhere. Things could fall out of it, you know, whatever he's got in it, like his water or his wine or whatever you want to say, but it could fall out, you know, so like he's having to go at a stable pace in order for his emotions to stay balanced, you know, but he's still moving forward. So for me, like the overall, overall energy or the main focus of what you're dealing with right now is about emotional stability and being able to move forward from that place, that position of really like being grounded in your emotions and really understanding what they're trying to reveal to you and understanding what they're trying to show you. And then this to the left is the past or the kind of energy where you're going from, where you're at and where you're going to. And I mean, you have a lot of cups here. You've got the page, the queen and the king of cups. So like, this is definitely about emotions. It's definitely about hearing yourself, hearing your intuition. It's definitely about emotional stability and emotional balance and getting clear on what you want in order to be able to move See now, what I'm getting right now is this is going from, it's like the journey of emotion into communicating it because the page of swords is all about communication. So for me, I feel like this Libra um, full moon for you is about really balancing your emotions so that you don't react in a way that you don't want to. It's really being able to like, tap into what you're feeling like really tapping into what you're feeling whether it's about a relationship this is kind of a broad reading like whether it's about a relationship or a career but Libra as the full moon is in Libra is always about relationships so this for me is really about like being in tune with your emotions and in tune with what you want and in tune with like being able to connect and express with the person in a way that isn't going to cause friction, in a way that isn't going to throw you off, in a way where you can effectively communicate your emotions and what you want and what you expect and what you don't want in a way that's effective because that's where you're trying to get to. You're trying to get to effective communication, you know. And also watch that this isn't deception, that this isn't somebody um, lying to you and you can feel it, you know? So, like, maybe that's a possibility for you. I feel like it's either saying that you are balancing your emotions so that you can communicate or you're trying to hear your emotions so that you can realise that somebody is lying, But I'm kind of feeling like this is you because you're heading towards the communication. So, I mean, take whatever you need, whatever you need to hear. But I definitely feel like even if you are realising that somebody is lying to you, it really is about you getting clear on how to express your emotions, how to feel your emotions and then be able to communicate that, even if it's communicating it to yourself. But then from the human perspective, which... 
is below these, something that you need to do, which is on a human level, is this is the three of pentacles, which represents connection and communication and teamwork and working with other people. So I do feel like this is about you trying to um, express yourself to others, trying to connect in a way that's authentic to you, trying to communicate your heart, trying to really like balance who you are, balance your emotions internally and then express that to other people, you know? But from the spiritual perspective, and it's so funny that this card came up because this is the card that came out for the reading number one, but it also came out in the spiritual perspective too. So I don't know if you're cross watching and you're watching two readings, but it's just funny how that come out, which like, it's such a powerful card. This is the Aries card and I am an Aries rising and Aries Venus. And um, from the spiritual perspective, like it's telling you to get the fuck in your power. Like, seriously, get in your power. Know who you are. You know who the fuck you are. You're the damn emperor, you know? <laughs> like, it's his kingdom. Make sure you're in it. Make sure you are embodying your true energy, your true power, your true force, God fucking frequency. Like, make sure you're being you. And communicate yourself unapologetically. Let yourself shine. Let yourself be who you are and express that unapologetically. And don't hold back, you know? Like, it's literally about connecting with people, connecting with whether it's a romantic relationship or whether it's in business, whether it's family, just really, like, embodying the emperor energy and being able to express whatever it is that you feel, whatever it is that you need to share. Like, even the Queen of Cups, she is so on her throne. She's not bothered by nothing. She's just, like, royalty, you know? Look at her, look at her um, cloak thing. I couldn't even see what that was. It is a cloak. Like. You see how much beauty and how much power and how much divinity is in this picture, you know? She's just in her bag, like, she just knows who she is. So I really feel like this is just going from these spaces and you have the the page the knight and the queen like that's a really powerful mix and then into another page so this is definitely like you're full of ideas you know like you're getting a feel for who you are and how you work and what you want and the direction that you want to go in and what that looks like for you so it's just about really unapologetically communicating that and being that and embodying that embodying your true self and the advice is the Knight of Wands. Like, you are ready. Look how many, like, knights, page, queen, you know. And over here you have the King of Cups. Oh, my God, I just noticed it's the Cups. <laughs> you have the full set, like, oh, all of these Cups. So it really is an emotional time for you right now. You might be going through it quite a bit with your emotions. But the advice is that you have everything you need. You know, like you're ready to move forward. You're ready to go into it. You have everything you need. You already are it. So the advice is to move forward. Move forward. In who you are, move forward. Do it. Express it, say it, be it, share it. Acknowledge it, you know. Like, don't hold back. This is who you came to be in this reality. You didn't come here to be anyone else. You came here to be you, which means that you communicate in your own way. It means that you feel in your own way. And it's okay for you to share that. It's okay for you to be that. And what to do next? These cards, like, flew out, okay? They be screaming at you. <laughs> what to do next? Get yourself out of this. Pick yourself up out of this, out of this fear that you aren't good enough. It's really telling you to get out of this, you know, pull yourself out of this, like you have everything that you need, you're ready. You're ready to move forward. But you have to see it from the spiritual perspective. You have to look at the higher perspective, the bigger picture, you know, and not fall down into this. It's really telling you like, it's the road of ascension, almost. And that is a mental process. But it's allowing yourself to feel your emotions and communicate your needs 
tell them exactly what you want, exactly who you are, and exactly what your kind of relationship, your kind of connection, your kind of like, even um, connections with family, like tell them who you are, show them who you are, you know, you're really balancing your emotions now, balancing exactly, like it's the internal balancing, the internal battle, but you're balancing it out, and you have everything that you need, like you are in control, you are ready. So, and this is what to do next, what, what I pulled these cards for. So to do next is literally the internal work, like that's literally what it's telling you to do. And I forgot this card, this was across here, which is like the bridge from the past of where you've been to where you're trying to go. King of damn pentacles. Remember your damn worth. Remember who you are. Remember how powerful you are. Remember that you're a king. You're abundant. You're a queen. Like, you are the shit. <laughs> Remember that you have all that you need. It's already yours. It's within your own mind and it's within your own heart. It's within your intent. And when you remember that and you get on your boss shit, and I mean that in a sense of energetically, like when you remember your worth, you remember how abundant you are and you move from this space then you literally, like, you change your reality, you manifest what the hell you want, you know? Your type of connections that you attract will change because you're moving from this space instead of from this space. When you move from doubt and fear and, like, worry about how someone will treat you or when you worry about the past and how you've been treated in the past and you've been broken in the past, it keeps this away because you're stuck here. You're stuck here and so all that you attract is this. But when you move from up here, flicking the cards everywhere, when you move from up here, you change everything for yourself. And the outcome is really saying that you have a decision, but that the decision will be revealed to you. Like the answer will come to you, but only when you tap into that, you know. The moon is all about the hidden. It's the hidden realm. It's things coming to light. But it's also trust in your instincts, you know? And the two of what the two of swords, indecision, the blindfold on, you know, like holding two swords so your hands are too full to be able to take the blindfold off. But yet you could easily just cut that blindfold off yourself. So like the answers are coming to you, but you have to hear your own heart, you have to hear yourself in order to be able to move forward. And I feel like that's what this is trying to tell you, that when you are aware of your emotions and you're aware of your thoughts and you process them and acknowledge them and you think properly and internalise them before expressing to somebody else, before telling them, like, you need to really process it yourself, then communicate it from that space of knowing from that space of power, from your heart, from knowing who you are and then really communicate it. Exactly what you want, exactly what you need and remember your worth. I love this reading, it's really like a reminder of your worth and your abundance and that is already yours. Everything is already yours, you just need to see it. You need to see it. You can't communicate it, you can't put it out into the physical until you see it in the mental. And that's really what this is saying to you. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching this reading and I will see you in the next video. Hi reading number three. So I'm going to shuffle the cards and speed it up otherwise we'll be here all day but I hope this really helps you. So this is going to be the Celtic cross but it's my kind of interpretation of it because then I feel like this way you get more answers because it's channeling specific questions and specific energy. So yeah let's get into it. Oh my God, these are flying out. <laughs> so, I just like to 
look at them to get a real feel for the overall message of what they're trying to say but this is for the Libra full moon and Libra is all about relationships, it's all about connections, it's all about the balance and finding balance within yourself and you also have the two of cups which is all about balance, it's all about connection, like exactly that. So let's get into this. Okay, so for the first cards that I pulled, this is your current energy, the overall energy of where you're at. And what I heard when this first fell out is like the battle between your hopes and your fears. The battle between what you want and what you don't want. It's really about like the inner child and then complete lack and complete despair and complete fear. So I really feel like maybe you're in a, either a relationship or situation or even just mentally in a space where you keep battling yourself. Like there's internal conflict between, it could be in regards to a decision you need to make, it could be in regards to what you want to do, it could be in regards to a lot of different things. So just kind of take this how you feel. But I definitely feel it as a conflict between your hopes and your fears, what you want and what you don't want, the lack and the abundance of having it all, you know, your inner child wanting to come out, almost. And from the human perspective, we have it being about a connection. So this could be about somebody, like, you really trying to learn how to be who you are in front of them, learning how to be your inner child and let your inner child come out and even just trust yourself trust that you're making the right decision by connecting with this person maybe you're doubting whether they're the right one maybe you're doubting your decision maybe you're doubting your worth maybe you're doubting where it's leading to but where you've been before i feel like this is really about I want to say like, because the devil, is this, it kind of looks similar to the lover's card, but yet you're in chains, see how they're chained to each other, so, and the fact that you've got the fall, which is all about new beginnings and fresh starts, I feel like this is really seeing things from a new perspective, seeing the relationship from a new perspective, maybe setting yourself free, maybe this means you're leaving a relationship, or maybe it means that you're re-evaluating the relationship or like trying to renew it and see it from a different perspective almost and really like um starting again like beginning again with how you enter relationships or how you um connect in the one that you're already in and it's really like looking at what you do have, looking at what you do want and really like being still in that, really feeling that and understanding that and getting to know exactly what it is that you want, but also exactly what it is that you already have. You know, the seven of pentacles, he already has all of these pentacles and he's deciding which ones he wants to keep and which one he wants to get rid of. So like, I'm really feeling this is about getting clear on yourself, getting clear on your hopes and your fears, getting clear on what you do want and what you don't want, getting clear on how your love looks, how your love feels, how you want this relationship to be, where you want things to go, really tapping into that and re-evaluating your previous connections, even re-evaluating past connections and what you learned from it, like really getting the lesson. So this card represents the future, where you're heading towards. I just noticed that I didn't actually pull a bridge card, so let me pull one of those. But the High Priestess came out for, um, okay, so the Queen of Cups came out. Um, the High Priestess came out for where you're heading towards and this is like really seeing the higher picture, you know. It's funny because she came out in the last reading as well, in reading number two. But you're heading towards like your higher self but seeing your relationships from a higher perspective of like you don't own people, they're not possessions. And 
also that you're worthy of being like you're worthy of standing in your power and expecting more you know like you're worthy of having standards of needing people to like step up to meet you and not settling for things that don't reach that that don't meet you exactly where you are like you're not lowering yourself to meet them you know this is a new beginning this is cutting the chains this is getting rid of the old this is getting rid of the connections that don't serve you and taking the lessons with you taking what you've learnt about the hardship and about the blessings taking all of that with you and the bridge this is I like to see this as like how to get there almost and the queen of cups like she just knows who she is she's sitting there on her throne she's not worrying she's not stressing she's not like confused of her emotions or her worth or who she is you know she's sitting there in her abundance so I feel like this is an emotional process of maybe letting go letting go of the past whether that means a relationship comes to an end or whether that means that you're like elevating that relationship to meet where you're trying to get to really like doing the internal work together or on your own so that you bring in the kind of connection that you want like you want to bring in a connection from this kind of space manifesting from this kind of space and really healing any deep wounded traumas from your childhood really healing any deep wounded traumas from the past really uncovering where your fear lies where the negative thoughts lie like where they stem from and it could be from childhood and that's this kind of journey that's the process in order to get this kind of connection you know and then from the spiritual perspective, which is the cards that I pulled up here. Now, I love the Ten of Pentacles. Like, this just screams to me the bigger picture, you know. Just like this card. Spiritual perspective, the long-term perspective, you know. Like, looking at retirement, looking at where you want to go. Looking at the bigger picture, the end goal. What you want your family life and your business life and your your entire life in all aspects. What you want it to look like. How you want it to feel. And... It's really saying that like the pain that you've experienced maybe in childhood or in the past, the different situations that you've had to go for, had to go through, they were necessary. They were so necessary because it's a part of the bigger picture and they're leading you to where you want to go. And the lessons that you're taking with you, they were so important and they were so needed because look, it literally leads you to your abundance. It leads you to everything that you want, everything that you can think about, everything that you want to express. It's leading you right there. But that you had to go through this process of like really healing these wounds. And you had to go through the process of feeling maybe trapped. Maybe you felt caged. Maybe you felt chained in a previous relationship or in a job situation. But that it was all necessary because it all gets you exactly where you want. It gets you clear on what you want and what you don't want. If you didn't go through this kind of situation, you wouldn't know what you want and what you don't want. You know, like it has to happen. But sometimes it requires a lot of stillness, a lot of being alone, a lot of connecting with yourself to really feel your intuition and really understand this dynamic of what needs healing, what needs releasing, what needs letting go. And what do you want to take with you? And the advice card, the hermit, like, this is the card of Virgo, if I remember correctly. And this is all about isolation. This is all about being on your own, being in solitude. And it doesn't mean that you have to be in solitude constantly. It just means that you take that time to yourself to really feel your pain, to really feel what's blocking you, to really work through those things, to really be able to release them so that you can get up to manifesting your abundance, you know, so that you can get to this perspective. Reaching this perspective does not happen when you're here, when you're like running around connecting with people that don't serve you. Reaching this perspective happens when you're alone, when you take that time to rest, even if it means just like having a nap, even if it means just spending half an hour by yourself just to read a book. You know, even if it means just spending half an hour to sit still, I mean, meditating, that is kind of where this internal work happens is through just hearing your thoughts, 
you could be cleaning your house while you hear your thoughts, you know, it doesn't have to be just sitting still, it could be cleaning, it could be dancing, it could be anything, something that brings you joy and something that allows you to actually hear yourself, releasing the distractions, and what to do next, <laughs> now look at how much suffering is going on here, look at how much conflict there is, this card came out in the last reading too, like, he has blindfolds on, but yet he could easily take them off because the swords are right next to him. Like, he could easily take them off. But instead, he's there having all of this conflict coming at him. And yet, look, that's who you really are. Completely abundant. Completely standing in your abundance. Completely knowing exactly who you are. Like, so worthy, so blessed so full of life, so happy, like that is your true essence, but yet you're blocking yourself. And even if it's external circumstances that have built up and like really brought you down into this conflicted energy, like sometimes it's not our fault, you know, but your your job and what is your responsibility is getting yourself back to here because nobody else can do that for you. They can keep you stuck here, absolutely. Many connections can keep you stuck here. But you can get yourself to here and only you can get yourself to here. And it's your job to do that. That is a part of this journey and a part of this life. That is what it's for. It is to manifest your abundance on earth. That is what we came here for. And I feel like that is what this process is. It's really getting clear on the connections that don't serve you, the situations that have happened in the past and the lessons that they taught and how you can use that pain, use that trauma, use everything that it took out of you, really use it and allow it to push you forward to what you do want. Because the outcome is the absolute world. You create your world, you know exactly what you want. Like, he has the world at his fingertips, you know. He's holding his pentacle in his hands. You know exactly what you want. You know exactly what your world would look like. You know exactly how you want things to be. But you need to allow yourself to get there. You need to believe that you are worthy of it. You need to allow yourself to let it happen, you know. Stop blocking yourself. Stop thinking that this is where you have to stay because it isn't. Stop thinking that this is all you deserve because it isn't. You know, you are abundant. This is who you are. You are abundant. You just need to realise it. You need to see it. You need to remember it. And use what you've experienced. Use the blessings and the lessons that it, that it gave you. So that you can get here and that you can appreciate it when you get here. It's all for you, you know, like... That's why we came here. We didn't come here to live in suffering forever. Of course, we have to experience some things. Some things like they're predestined, you know. Sometimes we have to go into this space. But what we get out of it is so huge and so powerful that we then get to start again, having gained all of the lessons that we needed. So I hope this was helpful. Remember your worth. Remember how abundant you are. Remember that you are God. Like God and love, they are the same thing. Remember that that is you. That is who you are. You get to be who you decide. Nobody else can decide for you. You get to be who you are. So make sure you tap into that and choose the type of connections that match that. Choose the type of connections that reach that. They have to step up to reach you now. You know? Once you know who you are, They've got to step up to meet you. Otherwise they fall away. Otherwise they don't get to be in your space. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that these messages helped you and gave you some clarity on something that you're dealing with. Don't forget to check out the description box below if you want to see links to my music and social media. I don't know why I said if you want to see, but if you want to click on. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I need a man that will hold me down. If he a yes man, I ain't keeping him around. I need a